Hi everyone, welcome to week three of the evolution and biology of sex. This week's topic will be genetics, so essentially looking at the transition from genotype to phenotype. So our encoded DNA profile to the expressed traits. In this video, I'll be going over a review of the central dogma of biology and in lab, you'll go over a fly breeding simulation and participate in some genetics case studies. Take a minute and pause the video and think about at least four things that you know about this picture. We call this the central dogma of biology or the central dogma of gene expression. Here we see DNA being transcribed into mRNA which is then translated into protein. DNA is comprised of nucleotides, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, designated by the letters A, T, C, and G. DNA is then transcribed into mRNA. mRNA is also comprised of nucleotides, adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine mRNA is then translated into amino acids, three nucleotides at a time. Amino acids are then bound together, making a protein, and proteins make us who we are and allow us to express certain traits. So mRNA is translated into amino acids, three nucleotides at a time. We call these chunks of three nucleotides codons because they code for a specific amino acid. Take a minute to think about the two questions on the bottom. Which amino acid is represented by the codon CGC, or cytosine guanine cytosine? Then find two ways to encode the amino acid valine. A specific segment of DNA that codes for a protein is called a gene. Many genes together make up a chromosome and each gene has a specific location or locus on the chromosome. DNA is wound around histones, which are a type of protein that essentially allow us to pack a ton of genetic material into a really small space inside of our cells. Humans get 23 chromosomes from each parent, meaning that all adult cells in our body have 46 chromosomes and we call these cells diploid. The exception to this are gametes, which are sperm or egg cells, and these only have 23 chromosomes. We call these cells haploid. We call this image a karyotype, and it shows all 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. In each pair of homologous chromosomes, for example, in set number one, we know that one chromosome came from the mother and one chromosome came from the father. There's also something else that we can tell from this karyotype. If we look at the 23rd pair of chromosomes, we can tell that this particular individual is a male because they have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. A female would have two X chromosomes. This slide is a little bit of a review as well as an introduction to alleles. So again, chromosomes are made of DNA, and DNA contains genes. These specific genes, for example, a gene for eye color, can have different versions, which we call alleles. In the case of eye color, we could have an allele for blue eyes, brown eyes, etc. Each person has two alleles, one inherited from either parent. In the top left box, we can see an example of this, here we have a pair of alleles with one being inherited from the mother and one from the father. These specific alleles code for proteins and proteins to determine the phenotype or the appearance. In the top right box we can see how a pair of alleles would be organized on a pair of homologous chromosomes. In the following slides we'll be going over how alleles interact to generate phenotypes or expressed traits. You can follow along with these examples in your lab manual. What example does this represent? 
This example represents complete dominance. We can see that we have two different alleles in this case. The big T is coding for the gray fur color and the lowercase t is coding for white fur color. These letters are arbitrary and simply are chosen because the uppercase T is significantly different from the lowercase t. In this dominance pattern, complete dominance, we see the same phenotype between the dominant parent and the offspring. What dominance pattern is present in this example? This example shows incomplete dominance. In this case, we have a black lab as one parent and a yellow lab as the second parent, and the offspring is a brown or chocolate lab. This is an intermediate phenotype that combines the phenotypes of both of the parents. What dominance pattern is seen in this example? Here we see codominance. We have a black parent mouse and a white parent mouse, and the offspring shows both parental alleles meaning that each of the alleles is dominant and each of the alleles will show up.